In his book, Id, Ego and Super Ego, Freud talks about what he calls the narcissistic libido. Now, what is this? It's very interesting, and when I first read of this idea, it made me think of pornography addiction, how it relates to an exclusion of object carthexis in the real world, and how pornography forms an abandonment of sexuality for the sake of fantasy, which is self-serving narcissism. Freud states that narcissism is a kind of ego-libido situation, that the libido which originates from the id becomes associated with the ego itself. This excludes the occurrence of object carthexis, which is basically sexual energy or libido energy attaching to ideas, persons or things. When this occurs, he states that the ego develops some kind of control over the id-related sexual instincts, which then lead to sublimation of them, which would be transforming those instincts or desires into socially acceptable actions. From this, the object-related libido transforms into narcissistic libido relating to the ego. Therefore, something like megalomania would develop because it is narcissistic, which is directly associated to the ego, which is delusional and pathological. But it could also explain things like multiple personalities, if the ego object identifications become too powerful and resistant to each other, causing neuroticisms. I then looked into Lacan on narcissism, and he aligns narcissism with the imaginary order in his model, and claims that sex is fundamentally narcissistic because it is caught up in a fantasy of idealism, idealized images of ourselves and partners. But I disagree with him completely. If sex was to be fundamentally narcissistic, it would only involve ourselves. But it doesn't. It's quite a stupid statement, I think. Watching porn, on the other hand, is narcissistic. Being addicted to it is even more so. Thus, this entire idea of ego libido or narcissistic libido really made me wonder about the connections which I'm hopefully going to point out in relation to porn addiction, because I think the idea of explaining it psychologically through Freud's model is present. The digital anima, the feminine digital construction associated with porn, does not involve physical interaction. The action of watching such said internet material only manifests because it is associated with the ego because it requires and involves observation and external world perception. The id is about instinct, and that is where object cathexis comes from, but when such said libidinal energy connects to the ego, it can become interested only in itself. Like a narcissist, this is the role which is played by the porn addict. Libidinal energy is expressed only through the uh, digital anima or animus, which doesn't involve a human being, emotions, personality, or any other human existence. Porn addiction within a relationship can turn it to breaking point. The narcissism involved in the fascination can cause abandonment of any real sexual relationship, a sort of desexualization in itself. The act of sex becomes rejected and inverted into fantasy, which exists only within the craving mind of the narcissist, which abandons reality for mental adolescent fiction, held together by a seductive matriarchy of comfort, protection, and passivity from the real world. Here is a quote which describes the ego-related fantasy which is created when one rejects what is real. When it happens that a person has to give up a sexual object, there quite often ensues an alteration of his ego, which can only be described as a setting up of the object inside the ego. The transformation of object libido into narcissistic libido, which thus takes place obviously implies an abandonment of sexual aims, a desexualization, a kind of sublimation. Thus, from this tension of opposites, the splitting directions of libido not only become cut from one another, but lead mentally to a possible splitting in personality or even development in neurosis. 
such as multiple personality, where the individual is in this state of affairs becomes ungrounded, no different from how, for example, in the mind, the digital and the physical worlds are opposites, yet how both in reality within the collective psyche among the people in the 21st century are both fighting a grand war to conclude who will win the human condition. Will it be the technocrats or will it be the humanists? It is this kind of war, but instead it is in relation to the anima. We have formulated a way in which we can encapsulate the anima inside a digital matrix, like the genie inside a lamp. The lamp being the computer and the jinn being the spirit within. Proposing a wish or the desire into the digital matrix and what will proceed to your fate will be of your choosing and action. I quote, it may come to a disruption of the ego in consequence of the different identifications becoming cut off from one another by resistances. Perhaps the secret of the cases of what is described as multiple personality is that the different identifications seize hold of consciousness in turn." End quote. I was sending a few messages back and forth to the guy who runs the YouTube channel Meme Analysis to see what he thought of these ideas, and he agreed with my Freudian interpretation and referred me to something which he called psychoanalytic autism, which sounds a bit odd, but makes sense in context because autism is referred to as a lack in sense of self or of the world around you in general. In relation to eroticism or sexuality, there is a microcosmic autism going on with relation to porn addiction and is manifesting itself in the physical world within the individual as consequence, which would be something like autoeroticism. What isn't erotic becomes erotic. The internet associating the libido against anything that is in a real reality. This is what meme analysis calls internet induced autism a lack of or sexual confusion in self and the real world, the digital matrix influencing its own truth onto the physical human, causing some kind of erotic autism, which is associated to a fantasy which does not even exist in the real world. In a Jungian sense, there is only one type of archetypal power which exists in porn or just the internet in general, in the mind of the submissive addict, and that is the feminine, the anima. And this has got nothing to do with who watches what, it is simply down to the nature of its existence. The negative aspects of the archetypal anima are associated to this lethargy and comfort, acceptance and devilish security which the digital anima lives and breeds on like the devouring mother, for example. Under her wing, she literally keeps one fixated to a comforting non-reality, away from the true world of possibility, danger, and rejection. This is something which actually exists through the internet and grows stronger every day, the more attention it is given. It feeds from the life force of people for it to exist. Anything which takes away the possibility for creativity in excessive amounts is bad for the soul. So anyone who is psychologically infused into the digital matrix is probably extremely passive and non-creative. When there is an overhaul of feminine or anima content in its most negative form, there is not going to be any masculine animus content associated with creativity or direction. The feminine aspect is all about observation, digestion, input, reading a book is naturally feminine, for example. Expressing that knowledge is then very masculine. A lot of people struggle with this truth because it is being turned on its head into something of political incorrectness. Soon as the feminine and masculine is talked about, we think of the physical man and woman, inequality, social reform, and all of this rubbish. The Jungian interpretation is that in all of us, we both have the anima and the animus, and how we deal with them is very, very important. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, comment and subscribe. Make sure to check out my Patreon if you are interested in donating towards the channel. Anything helps. With that said, thanks for watching and I wish you a happy new year.